Hello, our friends, Hearts Home family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Please do subscribe to all three channels if you haven't yet. And as you may or may not have noticed, we have been doing some Patreon-only uh, material, which we will be expanding on as well as this is something uh, that, well, it feels good to talk a little bit more open. And, you know, obviously, when we talk about the spiritual stuff on Heart's Home, we're talking freely and open, but we're also keeping it lighter. And that's, that's very easy to do. Um, but when you do talk about the control matrix, then, then it gets kind of heavy at times. And we have to use a lot of different uh, reference points, which, you know, we have not experienced at this point in time, any sort of, any sort of control over the material that we put on Patreon. So we'll keep going with that. Indeed. And then definitely expand on that to have more actual useful material that you guys could go to on a weekly basis. If you need uh, a pick me up, if you need to be stabilized, you need to be balanced. We're going to have all that up there absolutely so you know this is a, a hot topic obviously it has been for many years and it has been accelerating ascension into the fifth dimension but but what cindy has been getting from the guides is they want to explain why 3d you know here we are many people can't wait to escape 3d but really what it is, is it's the dark control grid that's in here because not all 3D planets have this control grid. Some you might even think of, in re <laughs> relatively speaking, are paradise compared to the control system we have on Earth. And Earth itself is a paradise when that control system is not in effect. Mm -hmm. And really what is coming up coming to the surface is you know yes we came here to experience love but we didn't come here to learn or experience perfect love because we come from absolute perfect love we came here for crazy love we came here for messy love we came here for all kinds of different uh, emotions that are really vast you know I mean life Let's face it, life gets messy, but it's our messy. And, and the beautiful thing about that is we have the option to choose these emotions, which bring us a great deal of expansion. And Mike did find this um, seven density model of consciousness. And I, I went through this and I really, really enjoyed it. And I want Mike to give his take on it, too. Um, the only thing that I, I don't agree is second density, uh, physical plants and animals. I don't think that they are separate. I think we are all here on the third density and everything that you see, everything that's tangible is right here in front of us. And, but it's also works in tandem with fourth density and then first density being the, uh, physical energetic minerals. These are what I call our elders. These are our our rocks, our stones, our crystals, the very first things that come into play and start to record information on the planet. So whenever you hold a stone, whenever you hold a crystal, whenever you hold these items near to your heart, you're getting so much information. You're getting information from some very beautiful beings that carry information that is so vast, you know, we're only able to pick up so many pieces about it but yeah i mean we come from perfect love so we came here to experience all those other types of emotions and feelings and to honor the idea that we can be in third density to bring um this expansion to us so that's that's what the guides have kind of been you know knock knock knocking at my door and saying you know talk talk about this because yes third density can be very difficult but we have choices we can steer our boat elsewhere if something is not working in our lives we have the ability to change it yeah there's there's several things to disagree with now this was done by n5d um which is uh, a gentleman from Sarasota, and he's a great guy, and he's done so much good in this world. 
But see, again, people will not see things exactly alike because none of us are exactly alike. And that's the whole purpose, because when we go all the way up the pyramid to the very top, it's unified. It's one. And as you go down, you know, they're showing six density, pure energy, unified thought forms. Yeah, when we when we talk about Aset, Isis, for instance, we get that right now. She is in a collective. She is part of a collective. Uh, a collective would be six density, yet she's still an individual. So, you know, again, this is something to really meditate on. Every cell in your body is unique. Every cell is unique, even though you can classify them as you know, skin cells, muscle cells, bone cells, lung cells, heart cells. Yet they're all unique, yet they are working together. They better be working together. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't be here physically for long. And we can think of ourselves, our, our individual consciousness like that. Yet they're all one. They're part of the body. And yet each one of us is, you know, a cell in the earth. The cell is... Uh, the earth itself is one cell in, you know, the universe. The universe is one cell in something even bigger. This is how it works and how it goes on forever. So when you look to sixth density, I do think you start getting into uh, collectives per se. And we had also gotten a long time ago that Aset ascended with several other uh, beings from, from her home. Uh, you can say, you know, her home planet. And they are working together in a unified matter. When we go up to seventh density, uh, you know, sixth and seventh, I think you get to those archetypes too, you know, where there's a certain energetic signature, like take uh, Tehute, Thoth, wisdom, quite simply. Wisdom, you know, he's a wisdom archetype and his energy is vast. And yet you'll have writings attributed to him, what we would say pseudepigraphy, which means that somebody was writing down something like uh, Thoth the Atlantean, giving us the information of the Emerald Tablets. Was it Thoth? No, it wasn't the entirety of Thoth's consciousness. Was it somebody either inspired or channeling Thoth? Yes, there you have it. And so, you know, there is something in the Bible called pseudepigrapha. But in reality, everything is channeling. And it's chan it depends on where you're channeling it from. But everything is channeling when we get down to it as far as all of our uh, religious texts, spiritual treaties, philosophical dissertations. When we get down to fifth density... This is where most beings stay. Most beings stay in that fifth density range where there is an understanding of the unity, but everything does appear to be very, very um, separate. But the understanding of the underlying unity is, is just a given at that density. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this can be looked at as change in Per perception you can create the ability to see things from a fifth density point of view and I feel that we have the ability to turn our perception and experience that but at the same time we are here having an experience in the 3D and we should accept that and honor that and do everything we can to experience that because all that you see with you the animals around you your loved ones the grass the trees all of this came here to experience this thing with you and for you and having the knowledge and understanding that there is a constant conversation when you are becoming one with the earth and you're waking up you'll start noticing that everything has emotions and you are able to channel and talk to different types of plants bushes trees and and some people that might just be too much 
but it, it's been my experience through my awakening understanding that the trees have something to say and that comes in the form of a certain vibration in which my body interprets and then I understand and then you know when you become when you understand this part of things you, you realize that there's a whole conversation going on when you walk out into a forest but at the same time there's another conversation going on even if you're in a city everything is talking to you everything is um working with you but it's up to you where do you want to have this experience how do you want to have this experience um, I prefer to have it out in the forest I love nature that's where I function the best if I'm able to get grounded if I'm able to do my my meditation standing out out under a tree that's how I function best and and some people they have to figure out where they function best and where how can you have the maximum experience for coming to this 3d world what is really going to work for you absolutely so when we look down to third and fourth density they are two sides of the same coin so to speak and, you know, third density, as Cindy's saying, it, it's an opportunity for amazing growth like no other. We can really grow when we go through third density. So you could think of it as a launching point for uh, soul growth. And another interesting thing throughout the, you know, hundreds of hours of channeling that Cindy has done is in some way, uh, the cycle of the yugas even affects beings up in, say, fifth and sixth density. It does affect them that high up. And the higher we can go, there is also uh, a relationship with how high they could go. And so, you know, again, when we look to this and we understand our interrelationship with these beings, you know, our higher selves reside in these higher densities. So what we have inhabiting third and fourth density are aspects of ourselves, of a smaller, a little bit more limited nature, but it is part of ourselves. It, and again, you know, you could really make the analogy of you are kind of like a character you're assuming to go through a game uh, although we don't want to trivialize this experience because this experience has consequences for the soul and again we can grow exponentially with these experiences and this is why so many people choose to come back time and time again now part of what I disagree with is when you look down to where it says spirit essence pyramid duality matrix that we're stuck in for now i don't really think we're stuck in it per se we're only stuck in it if we get to the point where we completely lose track of who we really are and so is there that possibility yeah there is the possibility we could lose track of ourselves we could get caught up in lower emotions we can kind of sever it's, it's like we come down, and you guys might have heard of the silver cord. There's this bluish, silverish cord that can, connects the astral body to the physical body. And it can't be perceived by some clairvoyance when astral projection is happening or even in a dream state. Well, it, it's, it's like we have a ladder uh, to the higher densities. And again, you, you could look at all the symbology in uh, the Bible with Jacob's ladder. 33 degrees there's 33 vertebrae you know you look at the ladder it's 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 consciousness angels you know originally means messenger and many people have noted in sacred geome geometry it's kind of curious angels and angles and you know again it, it does look like we are in some sort of natural matrix that has utilized this programming that is very clear and very obvious everything is fractal and we ourselves are fractals of our higher selves can that part of us you know get waylaid get caught up lose track of who we really are yes 
I don't think, though, that we are stuck in it because you always have people that have been able to ascend up to fifth density and even higher. So it's it, it's all about realization. And if we go to the Sanatana, Sanatana Dharma and we look into the Hindu tradition, it's all about self-realization. That doesn't mean, you know, realizing that I'm Mike the YouTuber, and Mike the energy worker, you know, whatever different hat I put on. No, it, it's recognizing that we are source. We all are source. We're, we're just basically a fractal of source exploring one potential avenue of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like to look at uh, third density as a very important platform, a platform in which we are able to grow. And just as you see that we are able to grow quite a lot with our energy and expanding our heart chakra, we are that platform for our higher selves. So as the energy is going and expanding, we are creating that ability for expansion. So understanding how important our position is here in the 3D being responsible for 3D things, you know, learning to be responsible for our emotions, learning to be responsible for everything that we have created around us, because this is this is what we created. This is ours. And understanding that at a at a 3D level, the more we can get a handle on that, the more higher self is also allowed to grow so finding yourself in a place of gratitude here in the 3d is real important for the higher self to also expand and have that solid footing to stand on because think of you know the pyramids always such a great example the thing above it is depending on the thing below it for its, its advancement absolutely so, you know, this is all just an opportunity for growth. We have to keep that in mind. And our bodies are just vehicles. So, again, I, I totally agree with what Cindy was saying. I don't think that the consciousness of animals is necessarily less than ours. Yeah, not at all. It's just in a different vehicle, so it can't express itself identically to a human. But just look to your dogs and your cats. Don't you see love in them? Don't you see at times fear? Don't you see all the things that you experience? The absolute joy when you come home or you're putting down their favorite treat or favorite food. And yet people have taken pigs and made them into pets and they've shared the exact same emotions. You know, I've noticed emotions in all sorts of different animals because it's the same soul essence it's just a different vehicle and the reality is some uh, you know as far as our consciousness goes we may not be and i don't think we are the pinnacle of consciousness on the planet you know the whales and the dolphins in some ways could be vastly superior to us I view the whales and the dolphins and the noises that they make as the actual glue that really holds everything together because we have light and we have sound. And when you bring the two together, that creates form. This is our duality. We need both. And what I have gotten from the guides, are the whales are so important. The vibration that they put out is is something that it's difficult for us to really understand because it's earthly. It's not just a creature in the water. It's a creature in the water sending out a vibration so that the light and the sound can come together and create form. And everything around us, you know, we, we need to look at things in a way and, and work on that oneness because we are on our way back. And understanding that all creatures, they are in a vehicle and how are we going to interact with them? And that's our own personal growth and our own personal experience. There is no one that is better than the other. Absolutely not. It is experience and it's ours and we get to claim it and we get to have it. And we should be so grateful. And 
you know, not allow our emotions to be caught up in certain things. And if we do get upset about something, always look for that way to channel that energy and just create something positive and beautiful. Absolutely. You know, I, I can't help but think of um, one of my favorite songs from Tool, Parabola. It's beautiful. The lyrics are inspired. And I, I do think Lateralis was their best album for those Tool fans out there. You know, again, this is an opportunity. And, you know, this very mortal body is housing immortality. So we should need to keep that in mind and understand that. This is where some belief systems that, uh, you know, when you research them thoroughly enough, they've been darkened by the control system in a way in which it, it takes away our understanding of it, who exactly we are. We are not dependent on anybody's forgiveness for anything. It's just simply a matter of soul growth. And yet, yes, if we get caught up in lower emotions, then we might find ourselves, you know, repeating lessons time and time again as we don't we don't advance. We don't pass them. We, you know, are failing the grade if we get caught up in the dark, negative emotions. It's really rising above. And if, if you look, with, without going into too much detail, if you look at everything that's out there in the news, it's clearly all about cultivating the darker emotions. And the secret is not to get involved in them. It's to take a step back, realize again, you are an eternal being having a temporary physical experience for the purpose of soul growth. That's it. And so then everything changes when we understand that at our core. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's up to us when we are ready to understand that. When are we ready to bring in that energy and express it at a certain level? And I really have to uh, reiterate that there's no higher, lower. It simply, it's just where you are. And where you are is a wonderful beautiful possibly very messy fantastic being that came here to explore this planet and explore things to you know to the point where you're you you have a lot of things to take with you when you go you know there's a lot of information that you can get if you go to school they teach you a lot of things and you know you you get these uh this information and these lessons and you're given a test but i look out in the world and i see you're test tested you're tested but then you learn a lesson so you know making sure that you're always learning from the earth learning from the world because She's going to give you one beautiful lesson after the next. You know, we're going to have bodies when we come here. We're going to have emotions. And that's not always going to be pretty. But it's it's ours and it's for us to grasp and learn and grow with. And that's the exciting part. When we look to Ma'at, the goddess of truth and justice, and she's holding an ankh. And again, the Ankh is life. And you could look at the Ankh as also kind of looking like a human type of form. So life, a human type of form, you could look at it as an incarnation. So what's she doing? You know, she's weighing the heart against a feather. So again, if our heart is lighter than a feather, then we will pass on. But who really is Maya? It, it's it's really the higher self. Again, this this is us. We're the only ones that really judge us is us because it's an individual decision. Do we want to go back right away and do it all over again? If you were rich, you know, was I showing arrogance? Was I not giving enough to others? Did I not give of enough of my own time and love? You know, was I just simply collecting Lamborghinis and, and houses and all these things? 
well, maybe I should go and, and this time I'm going to reincarnate as a, a person that isn't going to have anything just so I could learn these these lessons that I missed the last time. It, it could be anything. It could be that you were in a relationship and maybe, you know, you were abusive or maybe, you know, whatever it is. It's the higher self that makes the decisions. Yes, there there are um, natural laws of action and reaction, which we can view as, as karma, that can also kind of steer our incarnation in one way or another. But again, it's ultimately up to us. We are the only ones that truly, truly are judging ourselves. And we as far as the higher self, is the one that has the knowledge. So, you know, when you think of things like thy will be done and not mine, yeah, you can see that there could be dark forces that will take the energy every time somebody says that. But you can also apply it to your higher self and you're saying to the higher self, you know, let me live up to the original plan that I made for myself when I came in here. Let me let me find that out, know it, and let me live it, so I can learn the lessons and I can grow from there. Mm -hmm. I am a believer in in destiny, you know, and that's why I'm into astrology because I like to understand more about what did I come here to learn. And even though there might be a destiny for all of us, we're the ones we get to decide how we're going to get to that destiny. Do we want to drive like a Lamborghini? Do we want to drive a four-wheel drive Jeep? Do we want to take the back roads? Do we want to take the highway? All of that is ours. It's ours to experience. Absolutely. Do I want to have nothing to do with technology in the first place and be a total societal outcast doing my own thing? Right. You know, it's all our decision. So, you know, we wanted to just get that point across. You are a unique version. You're you. And, and that's great. Embrace it. Embrace it. And, and don't forget, you know, there's only one you. You're, you're the only you. There is, everyone else is taken. So just be you. Absolutely. And again, whether it's any position that is elevated or not elevated, that is really uh, something that the higher self is, is determining. So, you know, it, people will have these maybe grandiose notions that sometime we have to be very, very aware that the dark side utilizes ego. And so, you know, when you look to all the teachings of Yeshua, uh, even in the the Bible, which has been tainted and twisted and distorted uh, from his original teachings, you still don't see ever him telling people to get down on your knees because I am unique and there's only one of me and, you know, you got to worship me. No, I mean, even even in that situation with what we know has been distorted it they still don't have that in there b because obviously he would never dream of saying something like that so you know beware of the voices that have grandiose things that are whispering in your ear because again that would be the dark side trying to pull you down into a lower frequency where again they can keep you around them so yeah there is no condemnation from higher sources no not at all this is just simply an opportunity for growth mm -hmm. and ego has its place but you know we need to make sure every now and then we eat a nice big piece of humble pie from time to time it doesn't hurt and it really does expand your experience so when we say namaste it's that that which is source inside of me recognizes that source is inside of you and that's a thing where ultimately you can't get any higher than source. So in that sense, again, we are all one. We're all equals. We're just unique. Indeed. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.